Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So thank you for your comments last week. I think I got a good sense of how often I'll probably try to do these long form demo videos. And also somebody asked if I could do the closed captioning in Arabic, which we now do. And if you have another language, you know, Spanish or French or something that you would like to have that closed captioning, just let me know. And we have a new feature this week that I'll show you at the end. So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how paintings were painting shapes and not things, right? It's a two dimensional surface with a bunch of shapes on it. By definition, that's what we're doing. But the thing is, if those shapes are too close in contrast and there is no contrast and too close in size, they become sort of boring. What allows us to generate an interesting image is making sure those shapes have contrast of size and contrast of value. That starts to build up the tension that we need to create an interesting image. And it needs to be underlying, it needs to have underlying it the structure. So I'm going to show you the photograph today that I paint and my intention beforehand. The structure, the contrast of scale, of size, the contrast of value. And then you'll just see me block the whole thing in and then you'll see the finished image where I've adjusted some ed edges and colors and so on like that just to bring the whole thing together. But you'll see that even at the end of the block in, the big shapes and the value shifts are carrying the painting. So I hope you enjoy it. See you at the end. Here's the image we're going to look at this week. And this is in Stonington, Maine in the early morning. And my first thought is I'm going to crop it right here. So the first thing to notice is the proportion of this to this. I'm going to paint this 9 by 14. If you just took a 10 by 12 canvas and said, oh, this will do, you'll, you'd find that you would completely change the dynamism, the tension between and the contrast between the thing. Look at how large this shape is compared to this, which is way over to one side. I mean, there's the third there. So we're building up this tension and this contrast between this big simple shape here and then the lit shape over here. And this one also has, of course, these two lines leading us back to here. And you'll notice that this shape here is about the same size as this one here, and they're about the same value too. So I'm going to have to diminish the value of this to make sure that this is the place we're going to. And in light of what we talked about the other week on perspective, look at how in the same way that the whole, the edges of like we could take that as the top of the cube there, all these things, the doors and the windows and everything here is all doing that, leading back to the same vanishing point. So you can just lay a pencil along them, but you know they are slowly moving back, all of them in concert, back to the same vanishing point. This is the sort of thumbnail I might do just before beginning a painting, plein air, but it just gives you a sense of the structure and where I want the eye to go and the tools to do that. And it's like a roadmap of what I want to have happen in the painting. And then in the studio, I'll often do a drawing like this in advance of painting. Because one, I like the process of drawing, but also it really informs me a lot about what's going to happen and what the shapes are and how they overlap and how they interact. So I find drawings like this really useful before beginning to paint. So the first color I chose is that big shape next to the white wall because I can sort of get a sense of the value against the white. And you'll see that I'm really putting in a wide variety of greens here. There's kind of a red undertone and uh, moss or something. And you'll see that I actually, there's, there's some pretty red stuff in there. There's sort of, sort of the beginning of it. And then you can see it in there. You can see it in the photograph. It's just, I'm not sure what it is exactly. But there's a really wide range of greens. And in the end, I got rid of that shadow of the, that pole that's there. I got rid of that at the end. Here's the shadow shapes of the rock, quite dark, some blue in it. But you can see all the lines of the grasses are leading in the direction towards the center of interest. It's all kind of working towards that. Um, and then you can just see I'm putting in a few more touches of green. And then this big mass here of the shadow wall is quite close in value to the to the grasses below it so it's quite an easy color to find then that dark green 
you know, I could find that in relationship to the, uh, the shadowed wall and then the sunlit side of the, of the tree. And then each one, I'm finding it next to the other. I'm not just sort of putting colors in helter-skelter all over the canvas. I'm just putting one color next to the next, to the next. And as long as I get the relationship right between this one and the next one, see, the, the, the tree there wasn't dark enough, so I could get the uh, chimney to pop, so I had to go darker. This I've made quite a bit darker than, the, um, than it is in the photograph, because I don't want you to go there. That's where I want you to go, and you can see it's, it's, it's definitely not white. There's definitely yellow in that in order to give it the sense of sunlight hitting it. And then the chimney, nice red there. And then I've got cobalt blue for the sky. Um, it's added to my palette for this. And then I've got a little bit of uh, Cadillac lemon just to sort of shift it, and then you get the finished block in. And then there's the finished painting. Now, you can see in the block in, all the major shapes are there. But now with this, you know, I've, I've put in the windows and the doors and so on and kind of modulated everything forward. But it's all there in the block in. All the big shapes and colors are there in the block in. If that's not working, all the windows and doors in the world won't help you. You just got to get those big shapes in, make sure they're working in relation to one another, and then add what we'll call the detail on top of that. The original intention to bring us up here clearly works. That part is fine. We have certain shapes like this one that pulls our attention, but when you look at it, you can't help but come back to here. You have the same thing happen here. You look at it, but you come back to here. And even, uh, say, a window like that, you go up to look at that, but you will come back to here. So we're creating this tension between the different parts of the painting, but we have this sort of underlying structure that brings us here and here and here, these big simple shapes, sort of details of interest, but we come to the place what we had intended in the first place. So the new feature that I told you about at the beginning is that card, and you click on that, and you go to a site of available paintings, including today's painting. So if you're interested in those, you can go and have a look. Uh, please do subscribe. Please do like the video. Uh, I will see you next Tuesday. I hope you have a terrific week. Bye for now.